video, we gave an update of where I've been, what I've been doing, why I haven't put out videos, and we got this grass down to a manageable height. So now we have to take the first step to recovery of any yard, whether you're just now getting motivated on grass and watching videos and going crazy Googling and searching stuff like I did when I started. If you're that guy, or even if you have a nice yard already, this is one thing you need to do before you start pushing growth and trying to get it nice and green and full and thick because there's no reason to push that growth if you're gonna make the weeds grow more too. So today, we're gonna be killing weeds. I know we'd rather be mowing and striping and pushing growth and all that, but this is detrimental to the health of the grass for the long term. Get all the weeds out and then we'll push the growth. Here in a minute I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you some NYTDs we got. I call those neighbors yard transmitted diseases because this ain't my grass that's trying to come into my Bermuda. This is some other types of grass and weeds and stuff. And some of it is just weeds that have come up just from stirring up the dirt with the dethatching and the scarifying. Let's turn the camera around. We'll take a look at what we got. And then I'll show you what we're going to do about it. All right, like I said, you can see the grass is coming in. It's starting to get uh, some good color to it and everything. Uh, since we treated it rough and did some scarifying and scalping. But you can see weeds weeds there's bunches of weeds coming up everywhere all right so here closest to the driveway you can see right here we've got some people would think it's crabgrass because of how it looks compared to the bermuda but this is actually centipede so this is what all of my neighbors have in their yards so somehow or another through birds or or whatever this grass has gotten in here and you can see it's like Bermuda it has stolons right here that run out and see it's starting to spread all through here and run out that way so we got a spot here a spot there all right now here we have some type of weed I'm not even sure what it is but I know it's fixing to die uh, right here you can see it growing in right there that is definitely not bermuda so that kind of is running all through this area here and then we've got some uh, dallas grass right there we may have to remove the dallas grass manually because what the weed killer that i have or as far as i know any weed killer will not kill dallas grass so that may be something that we have to remove manually once again, here, close to the magnolia, there's more of this whatever it is. Uh, if you know what this is, just put it in the comments below. I'm not really concerned unless it doesn't die, then I'll try to figure out what I need to get to kill it specifically. But we got more of that here. Here we have more centipede trying to invade the Bermuda. There's this grass. I'm not sure what this is. It's not St. Augustine. It's not centipede. It's not crabgrass and it's not Dallas grass. It stays low to the ground, but it, it spreads out kind of like crabgrass. But see like this is centipede. See the runner? This is just in little bunches. So I'm really not even sure what this is. And then beside it here, you can see, I think this is Creeping Charlie. Just little small clover-like weeds. So, And then you have more Kalinga. You can see the Kalinga here and here. And a little spot right there. And then you have your run-of-the-mill clover mixed in. And then last but not least, we have crabgrass. Now... One thing I want to show you, and it's very predominant with crabgrass, is this right here. You see that water beaded up on that leaf blade there? That right there is the reason 
why you want to use a surfactant. Now a lot of times I'll use dish soap or baby shampoo and what that does is it breaks the surface tension and allows the water to spread out. Now if I remember to do it, which I'll try, once I spray this crabgrass where you see the water beading up, I will come back and show you what it looks like with surfactant. So if you spray weed killer without surfactant, it's more than likely going to bead up and you're not going to get as good of coverage on the weeds. So it'll run off just like that one drop did. You can see. It's so we'll come back to that once we are spraying our weed killer. All right, so today, not only are we gonna kill weed, but we're gonna kill any other problems that we might have in our grass that's keeping it from coming in and filling in like it's supposed to after our bent grass episode. So we're also gonna put out some Disease X by Scott's. Uh, one of these bags covers 5,000 square foot. This here is 7,000 square foot. So I'll be putting out two of those bags. A little extra ain't gonna hurt nothing. I bought that at Lowe's, so if you know me, I'm not a big online shopper. There are some things you have to buy online, I realize that, but I'm a go-get-it kind of guy. I'm a people person. I don't really shop online. I don't Amazon everything. If I need toilet paper, I go buy it. Just an average guy, I guess you could say. Uh, this is the weed killer that we're going to be putting out. I also went and got this myself. You can get this at Tractor Supply. I'm pretty sure there's a Tractor Supply everywhere uh, or close by anywhere you live. This is called Trimac with Crabgrass Killer. It says, kills crabgrass and over 200 listed weeds in country and suburban lawns. You might not have a lawn, you might have a yard like I do. So this works on yards and lawns. The active ingredients are 2,4-D, quinclorac, which is what kills the crabgrass, and dicamba. It says, kills crabgrass, foxtail, and most troublesome broadleaf weeds, including dandelion, clover, thistle, and other 200 weeds listed. We're not going to go through all 200. You get the picture. It says, you can use this on Bermuda, fescues, Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, and zoysia grass. It says do not use this on bahia grass, bent grass, carpet grass, centipede grass, St. Augustine, and turf species that are not listed on this label. This is good for your cool season people up north if you have perennial ryegrass, or if you have tall fescue or Kentucky bluegrass, this will also work on your yard. We'll be putting out this fungicide, Disease X, to help with any fungus because I know some people up north or like in Utah and stuff, they're all going through a drought right now. Well, right now we're going through a surplus of rain. It rains every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. And I've noticed some brown spot coming in and that right there will keep your grass from flourishing and greening up. So we're gonna put that out to treat uh, the brown spot that I do have and prevent any other fungus from holding us back from getting maximum growth out of this Bermuda. I got a new sprayer. Everybody kind of giving me crap about using my pump up sprayer. So I went and got me an electric sprayer from a local feed store. This is called a Revolt battery operated sprayer. This cost me like $140. Uh, I don't have to have a $600 or $400 battery operated sprayer. I just ain't that bougie. I don't have to have a $500 or $700 or $800 spreader. This is $69 at Lowe's. Sure, the spiker spreaders and all those big name spreaders are nice, but they ain't that nice. Not when I can get the same result out of these, which you can too. So, like I said, nobody's going to pay me off just to say a product is good. I'm going to show you how you can do it in real life with a real yard and keep your money in your pocket. So, Alright, so first uh, we're going to put out the fungicide. We'll get this put out 
and then we will come back and we will do the the weed killer. Okay, now I wanted to show you, which I think it's the same piece of crabgrass, what I meant by hydrophobic. You saw before how the, the water beat it up. Well, this time I'm gonna spray it with the weed killer mix, but it's got the dishwashing liquid in it to break the surface tension. See how the water doesn't beat up? It's all evenly coated. It breaks the surface tension so that the entire plant can get coated with the uh, weed killer. There's your why on using surfactants or soaps. So, All right, so it has been 36 hours since we put out the weed killer. And you can kind of see some of the effects of it. But a lot of these weed killers take four or five days, especially the quinclorac. I've seen it take about a week before it really starts showing some major damage. But... There is some damage going on to these weeds, and I'll turn the camera around now and let you see that. All right, so looking out across here, you can kind of see the discoloration in some of these spots, like here and here, some weeds. And as you go out here, you can see some starting to yellow up. Here's some of the centipede grass. You can see it's kind of yellowing. You can see the browning on the leaves. Uh, the tips of it. You see the tips are starting to curl up right there. All right, here's some clover. And you can see the brown spots starting to come in on the clover. They're really uh, taking a beating right now. So, All right, so there you have it. We are on our road to recovery. The uh, first video in this series was just getting it cut down and getting it scarified and dethatched and getting all the mess out of it and getting the grass down to a manageable height. This video obviously was about killing the disease and the weeds, which to me weeds are, are a disease. <laughs> now whenever you put weed killer out like this, you want to leave it for at least 24 hours. The longer you can leave it, the better. Uh, here we have left it for 36 hours. And I'm going to be putting in a mow pretty soon. So now that we have our grass under control, our disease under control, and our weeds are on the way out the door, our next process is to start pushing growth, 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 and get this grass to thicken up. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, comment down below, and definitely don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Have a blessed day.